everyone, my name is Samir Sharma. I'm the Global General Manager for Smart Cities and Intelligent Transportation at Intel. Okay, Samir, so tell us a little bit of what is a smart city and how far are we from that concept? Yeah, so the phrase smart cities implies technology because of smartness, but we think of smart cities differently. Smart cities are all about improving the quality of life for people who are living in the city. It's going to happen through a combination of certainly technology contribution, but it's also about the right policy decisions. It's also about the right collaboration between private and public sector to solve issues like traffic congestion, lack of parking, uh, better public safety, more efficient garbage collection, reduction of pollution. In cities that face flood problem, it's about flood water management, and on and on and on. Okay, and uh, in those cities that are kind of ideal, uh, how you guys envision that we have continuity? Because for example, in Bogota and Colombia, we have a big problem is that when we change the major or the president, each and everyone wants to start from zero, from the scratch. So we get to do the same thing uh, around the city many times. So uh, what you are pointing out is a genuine issue around policy and continuity of policy and decision making. I cannot s give you the entire solution, but here is how technology can help. Think of technology as building blocks. If you start by ensuring that whatever you are building is based on standards and interoperability, what that means is even if you decide to change direction, the work you have done can still be leveraged. So you don't have to rip out all the old work that was done and put in new technologies. You can build up on it and say, my priority will not be, let's say, traffic management. My priority will be public safety. Fine, you've already put in the cameras. They are AI enabled. You can update the algorithms on those cameras to say, this will be the primary purpose of this infrastructure. So that's one example of how thinking about infrastructure as scalable and interoperable and standards based, you can build that flexibility so that even if the political priorities change, which is a reality of democracy, you still have an element of continuity versus rip out and rebuild. Okay, and how does the smart cities use the data to predict, like for example, disasters and things that are going to happen in certain places? Yeah, so already what we're seeing is there's a ton of data around public safety and transportation that's being efficiently utilized for things like traffic management and dynamic red and green light control at intersections. Uh, if there is an accident, it's being used to better respond with the right level of medical care uh, for whoever is injured. So there's a bunch of these things already happening that are based on data-based insights. I think as you move forward, there is a lot more real-time use of the data. And what I mean by that is, if a parking spot become available, I need to advertise that right now to people around that area so that they can find parking. Advertising that fact a day later doesn't help me because a day later that parking spot may not be available. Or if traffic congestion is starting to build up, we need to start redoubting the traffic now because if we don't do that or try to do it two hours later, that data is not relevant. So the one big change that we're starting to see is what we call edge computing, which means real-time analysis of the data. Wherever the action is happening, you're able to figure out what's going on and how to respond to it. Okay, and is there any process for uh, for the government, for example, to head in the right path in order to create a smart city? Absolutely. You know, what I tell the cities and the governments across the globe, irrespective of where they are, is uh, think big, start small, move fast. You need to know where you're taking all this work. You need to have a vision. Right? So, in that sense, the learnings from one country or one city could be applied to another one? Like for example in Latin America there is a whole different ecosystem? That is absolutely correct. What, what we say is the learnings are global, the implementation is hyper-local. Because what is applicable in a city in Latin America will not be applicable to a city in China. But some of the learnings and how to approach it and the issues you have to work through when you implement something like that. Those learnings can be aggregated from all over the world. So in my case, my team works with the government in Singapore, in India, with parties in China, in Europe, in Latin America, in the US. And one of the things we bring together, together with our partners is 
How do we take these learnings and make sure the next set of deployments benefit from those learnings? Sounds really nice and thank you very much.